Oh, oh, we might have another cosmological tension or something we cannot explain on our hands. Additional studies, simulations and observations confirm the existence of yet another unexplained phenomenon that seems to create a bit of a problem or even some kind of a cosmological crisis that we currently cannot explain. Once again suggesting that the current explanations for the entire universe are definitely incomplete and potentially need to be reworked once again. And in this case, we're actually going to be discussing some of the new studies based on various simulations and based on a lot of different observations that essentially confirm the existence of S8 tension. A somewhat similar concept to the so-called Hubble tension, but in this case causing different effects and once again without any explanation. So, hello wonderful person, this is Anton. Let's discuss exactly what was recently discovered, talk a little bit more about what all of this means and more importantly, discuss some potential resolutions. But first, just a super quick review on what we're actually discussing. The first tension, known as the Hubble tension, is something related to the expansion of the universe. Based on some initial concerns observed in the late 90s, the scientists knew that the universe is expanding, but at that point in the 90s, it was assumed that the universe was only about 8 to maybe 12 billion years old. Yet during this time, scientists discovered stars that were potentially much older, creating a major problem. And within just a few years, several scientists were able to explain this as not just the expansion of the universe, but also the acceleration of the expansion. This was the discovery of the so-called dark energy, something that seems to cause the universe to expand much, much faster than it should be otherwise. And at this point, the age of the universe was reworked to be about 13.8 billion years old. This also eventually led to the Nobel Prize. But with time, scientists discovered that it looks like this acceleration potentially is not constant either. The universe seems to accelerate much faster depending on where you look. It currently has no explanation, but these measurements for the Hubble constant, as it's known, in the last decade established different values, suggesting that this is a real phenomenon that needs to be explained. And so not knowing why the universe is expanding at different accelerations and not being able to explain it using any modern physics is what's known as Hubble tension. You can learn more about this in some of the videos in the description. But more recently, a lot of different simulations mixed with different observations, especially the ones involving dark matter and not dark energy, started to discover something else. In this case, it's actually related to the idea behind clumpiness of matter, or essentially how matter is able to form larger and more dense objects. And so here we're not just talking about things like galaxies, we're also talking about galactic clusters or even superclusters located around us. And generally speaking, because of a lot of very accurate observations, this clumpiness of nearby galaxies has actually been calculated relatively accurately. It's described with a term known as sigma 8, and it basically measures various matter fluctuations on a very large scale of approximately 8 megaparsec. And so for a lot of nearby galaxies, this value was discovered to be approximately 0.745. This has been calculated and recalculated many times. And because of how matter usually clumps together and how gravity interacts with everything, and based on various assumptions about the early universe, it was assumed that as the universe expanded, the clumpness might actually grow by just a small amount as the universe grows larger and larger. Mostly because the universe started as very uniform and relatively similar in density, and eventually things came closer and closer together, forming various clusters, superclusters, and so on. And though this should be somewhat suppressed by things like, for example, dark energy, it would not be enough to change the overall clumpiness by that much. In other words, if we look back in time, we should maybe see a little bit less clumpiness, but it should not differ by that much. In other words, the gravity very likely worked in a similar way back in the days as it does today. But when it comes to cosmology, you can also usually calculate a lot of things by just looking at the cosmic microwave background as well, the oldest light in the universe. And so in this case, cosmologists can easily derive the sigma 8 value by measuring the clumpiness of the universe as it was 13.8 billion years ago. And originally, they obviously expected the value to be either similar or potentially lower than 0.745. Yet that's not what was discovered. All of the CMB-based calculations discovered it to be approximately 0.8159, much higher than what we actually see around us. Implying, of course, that the clumpiness in the beginning of the universe was first of all much higher, 
but second of all presenting a major problem. There is no explanation for why. This would require a major restructuring of the standard model of physics, potentially changing some really important components in the formula in order to fit everything into the model we use today, with current observations suggesting that we might need to change the theory of gravity itself. And obviously ideas like Mond might want to come to the rescue. In this case, Mond itself is not able to explain any of this either. Because here we're talking about fundamental changes throughout the entire universe that currently cannot be explained. And though it is quite possible that soundness could be explained by adding some kind of a new parameter or some additional force on top of this, at this point nobody really knows how to approach this. But obviously there are some propositions. For example, maybe the dark energy itself became much stronger over time, pushing the universe apart much more today than before, and thus maybe also providing some answers for the Hubble tension. But at the moment there is really no connection to any of this. On the other hand, maybe this is actually related to galactic winds. One of the first and one of the easiest explanations in this case actually involved the idea of galactic winds usually formed by massive black holes. And we know that when galaxies form, they normally do have very powerful emissions from the center that can actually create these winds which would then push the matter apart. And as this happened over time, it might have dispersed matter, lowering the overall clumpiness and thus dramatically changing what we see. Or maybe this is some kind of a bias or miscalculation. So basically here this is where the scientists wanted to really kind of find out what's happening. Which is why a team of scientists decided to perform another really major supercomputer simulation, basically simulating the universe once again. And this time this is actually one of the most complex ever achieved. It's known as Flamingo. Short for Full Hydro Large Scale Structure Simulation with All Sky Mapping for the interpretation of next generation observations. Yep, quite a mouthful. But the idea was pretty simple. Instead of just using for example dark matter, they decided to combine dark matter, neutrinos and hydrogen gas, putting all of it into one large supercomputer simulation and then running it on 30,000 processors of Dirac Cosma 8 supercomputer at Durham University for many, many, many hours. In order to basically see what happens, what sort of a universe is created at the end, but most importantly, trying to find out if this is bias or maybe miscalculations and if galactic winds, as you see right here, play any role. And well, first of all, unfortunately, even after these simulations, there was no sufficient explanations for this unusual S8 tension. Mostly because the galactic winds that were formed here definitely were not powerful enough to reduce the clumping and to explain the differences in this unusual value. Even some of the most extreme galactic winds were not sufficient enough to lower the clumpiness of the matter. Which means that, well, maybe, the dark matter itself is more exotic and potentially contains additional effects. Or maybe the regular matter itself in reality is much much stronger than what the scientists were trying to simulate right here. But compared to previous simulations like the one you see right here, known as Illustris, Flamingo by itself is already extraordinary. For one important reason. It actually includes a lot of baryonic matter, so basically gas and neutrinos, which are usually very difficult to simulate because they don't just feel gravity, but they also interact with gas pressure and of course electromagnetic fields. Although in this case that's one thing that was not simulated and it's obviously unclear how important this is for the evolution of the universe. But by carrying out 28 different simulations and by changing some of the parameters, the goal of this project was to try to compare this to actual observations in order to discover the true values of many of these constants and many of these properties. With the overall confirmation being that the unusual S8 tension is real after all and the modern universe is much less clumpy than it used to be back in the days. And so now not only do we have to deal with the Hubble tension or the unusual difference in the Hubble constant, we now also have to deal with the second tension in the cosmological model, simply known as S8 tension. And though some scientists have already been calling for basically a failure of the so-called cold dark matter model and the need to reassess everything, at this point it's also important to try to measure this again and then try to figure out if maybe there's some other additional explanation such as for example just miscalculation or bias. Which is why actually simulations like this one are super important. And actually one of the more unusual discoveries coming out of the simulation and also previous observations is the fact that the universe actually seemed to behave as expected for a very large part of the cosmic history. 
The clumpiness seems to be more or less the same for a very long time and only changes much later in the existence of the universe. So it's as if something dramatic changed in the last few billion years in order to make all of this happen. Which is exactly what the scientists also observed with the Hubble tension. So for all we know, we might have discovered a completely new phenomenon in regards to how the universe evolved and it might be something absolutely massive. So this is not a consolation of the standard model of cosmology, this could potentially lead to a major discovery later on. Which, as I mentioned before, is exactly what happened in the late 90s. This is when the scientists were able to discover dark energy as a concept, recalculating the age of the universe once again, and in the process teaching us so much more about what we now understand as cosmology. So maybe just maybe, something like this was just discovered yet again. But exactly what or how to explain this, at the moment there's no actual explanation for now. But if you'd like to find out more and actually learn about the details and of course the actual calculations, check out one of the lectures you can find in the description, available from the PIRSA or Perimeter Institute Recorded Seminar Archive. Here it goes through absolutely everything we know about SA tension and it's basically a 40 minute lecture explaining this mystery in detail. But at least for now that's kind of all we know. A new issue, no explanations, but also a super exciting mystery. We'll come back and talk more about this once there are some additional explanations. But if you'd like to learn more about additional problems with cosmology, check out some of the previous videos in the description or stay tuned and subscribe because we're going to be discussing Hubble tension once again since we do have some new discoveries and new updates. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support the channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful present t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.